Meanwhile, the Russian Defense Ministry has published some images which it says shows the launch of the caliber cruise missile from its newest Russian diesel-powered submarine. According to the Russian authorities, uh, during maneuvers, the caliber missile was launched from an underwater position and it managed to successfully hit a coastal target at a distance of over a thousand kilometers. The latest Russian submarine of the Pacific Fleet launched the new caliber missile and successfully destroyed a coastal target in the Pacific Fleet. It is said to be one of the first diesel electric submarines that is capable of carrying high precision caliber cruise missiles. The drill also involved covert movement and support from military ships, aircrafts and drones. Now Japan, remember, lays claim to the Russian-held southern Kuril Islands in the nearby Sea of Okhotsk, which Tokyo refers to as the Northern Territories in a territorial rav that dates back to the end of the Second World War, when the Soviet troops had managed to seize these islands from Japan. The dispute has prevented the two countries from even signing a formal peace treaty. Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin attended via a video link a flag hoisting ceremony of the two new nuclear powered missile submarines that have now been inducted into the Russian Navy. Vladimir Putin congratulated the Russian naval forces and also noted in his speech that it was an essential milestone in their history. The Kinyask Oleg is a Bore class submarine armed with ballistic missiles, Bulava, while the Novo Sibrisk is a Yasin class submarine that is equipped with cruise missiles, Caliber and Onisk, which can hit sea targets and also deliver precision targets on the ground. The United States, of course, claims to be monitoring these developments closely. However, Washington has said that at this point of time, there are no plans of an in person meeting between Vladimir Putin and Joe Biden presently. Whether uh, that leads to, um, at some point, another meeting between uh, the president uh, and, and, and President Putin, uh, I, 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 I leave that for another day. There are no plans uh, to do that now. I think uh, we have to see if, in the first instance, there's any progress dip diplomatically. We also want to see Russia de-escalate to move forces back from the border with, uh, with Ukraine, to take down uh, the tension. Uh, it's um, much more appropriate to have a conversation uh, in those circumstances than it is when um, the escalation is happening, not de-escalation. Meanwhile, the United States is stepping up of weapon sales and deployments in Europe. U.S. State Department has approved the potential sale of Javelin anti-tank missiles to the government of Lithuania in a deal that is valued at a staggering $125 million. And the sale has come as tensions are in fact running high in Eastern Europe, with Russia massing up its troops along its border with Ukraine. In the month of October, the Biden administration had sent javelins to Ukraine. The U.S. Embassy in Kiev had said on Twitter. The Pentagon further said that the proposed sale will in fact help Lithuania build its long-term defense capacity to defend its sovereignty and also its territorial integrity in order to meet its national defense requirements. Despite approval by the State Department, the notification does not indicate that a contract has been signed or that negotiations have concluded. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.